name is Shivesh. I'm from GIC. Um, GIC is the sovereign wealth fund of Singapore. Um, having one client, which uh, help us as to manage the foreign exchange reserves for the government, allows us the luxury of truly investing for the long term. Um, our clients measure us on uh, a 20 year rolling rate of return. So the investment philosophy that anchors our approach towards ESG and especially climate change um, is that we believe companies with good sustainability practices and companies which are doing more to save the planet will perhaps do much better than the ones that don't. Um, there is a lot of empirical data around it um, to suggest that the outperformance of such companies is quite significant. In fact, especially so in the long term and the differentiation is quite marked as you go across time horizons. Um, they also do much better uh, in terms of uh, downside protection when uh, there is a social or economic crisis. These companies tend to do much better than the peers. Uh, so we truly believe that in the long term, sustainability aligns quite well with financial returns. And we believe that if you approach sustainability on a detailed manner, in a bottom-up fundamental fashion, you can achieve good returns for your clients. Companies have always been very responsive in terms of engaging. What has changed is two aspects. One is um, our focus and, uh, um, and proactiveness in engaging with our portfolio companies on such matters, especially on ES and G. Um, and within that, I would say what has taken foremost importance is the sustainability side. Um, our client is quite clear that it's one of the most important things for us as a country as well. And hence, we are doing much more in engaging with our companies to understand how they're doing on various sustainability metrics, um, understanding what is most material for a given company on these ESG factors, uh, and these material factors and how do they connect with the financial performance of these companies. So again, aligning quite well with our financial return objectives that if these companies do well, and if we track them continuously and engage with them on an ongoing basis, making sure that they are tracking well on these ESG metrics, we ensure that they do well in terms of financial returns for us as well. Um, in our portfolio companies, we are conscious of uh, how the climate change is going to impact these companies. Um, many of the assets have the risk of being stranded uh, much earlier than what the market is pricing in. And we are not sure whether the companies themselves realize that. Um, and hence, it requires not just one-on-one -on -one engagement, and in some cases, collective engagement from large shareholders such as ourselves in order to make a positive change in the company's move towards a cleaner future. Um, there are trade-offs along social and uh, climate change objectives as well. Um, again, emerging markets is a great example where uh, there is still a need for fossil fuels in order to bridge the gap between where they are right now and where they will be in the future. And hence, as an investment firm, we need to be mindful and cognizant of the path of this journey and not just care about the endpoints. So we don't think a one-size-fits-all approach works, especially as a global investor such as ourselves. Uh, so it's a very customized one-on-one -on -one approach, especially as we were talking about engagement. We've been using this time to engage one-on-one -on -one with each of these companies, no matter which jurisdiction they are and identifying how they're doing well, where they ha there is room for improvement on each of these factors. Uh, there, there are a lot of local rules and regulations which help a lot in terms of guiding us, uh, but we really took take a more sort of long-term approach in identifying the key factors and tracking the companies again. Um, asset managers and managing uh, uh, the wealth for uh, uh, the government of Singapore, we see ourselves as part asset owner and asset manager as well. Um, and uh, we see asset managers um, indulging in greenwashing activities, which we believe is not just good for the planet, but also not good for the portfolio. Um, as I was saying at the panel uh, just a little while earlier, um, you can build a net zero portfolio very quickly uh, and very easily by um, investing in a bunch of tech firms, which probably have l very little carbon footprint, uh, and then uh, just kicking out all the companies which are in this biggest bucket called the transition bucket. Right? The companies are yet to make a big transition, but you could take out all these big carbon emitters. That's a very easy way to get to net zero. It's not good for the planet, but it's good for your portfolio. Um, what we do uh, instead is 
we, we really see a lot of opportunities in this transition bucket where you can really engage on a one-on-one -on -one basis with these companies, understand if they have a clear and credible journey in transition to, towards a cleaner firm. And that's where we feel there could be very interesting return opportunities for investors such as ourselves, as opposed to just investing in a net zero portfolio, which as I said, may not even be financially attractive because as you see, there's just so much capital flooding into these, these net zero uh, funds or growth funds, which uh, um, the valuations may not be pricing in, uh, the fundamentals which are required to generate the returns in the future. Thank you.